Castro with ACT Fitness Academy, and you are listening to ACT Fitness Radio, coming to you from Whittier, California. Unfortunately, Jaylene could not join us for this episode, but don't worry. Don't worry. She will be back, so you'll have to stay tuned for the next episode. But for this episode, we do have an awesome guest. His name is Ryan Burns. He is the head coach of at SCU Human Performance Center, which is actually a gym located on the campus of SCU, Southern California University of uh, of Health Sciences. Um, and, And it was such a pleasure talking with him. This is a guy who's got a master's in kinesiology from Cal State Fullerton. He's got a bachelor's in kinesiology from Cal State Long Beach. He is a certified strength and conditioning specialist with NSCA. And he's got USA Weightlifting Level 1 certifications. This is a really smart and educated guy, but the best part about him is that he is a very humble and honest man, uh, prioritizing the well-being of not only his clients, but also the coaches who are beneath him over at SCU Human Performance Center. Um, so it, it was just a huge pleasure talking with him. We go over a lot of topics concerning uh, concerning overall just strength training, sports training, the importance of deloading, and other topics concerning uh, your own training and even our training. So it was such a good conversation that it actually has been one of the longest conversations that we've had so far on this podcast. So we're just going to go right into it. Here is Ryan Burns of SCU Human Performance Center. So personally, I'm coming from a weightlifting background, so Olympic weightlifting. Okay. So I wouldn't say my form is perfect because there's a lot of things I'm still working on, Um, but uh, I do think I've come a long way or doing pretty well as far as uh, weightlifting goes. Um, And I think it's helped me be a better coach because Uh it's it's a really technical sport Uh and the lifts are very technical and things happen quickly. So it just helps me see technique and really develop my coach's eye when I'm working with my own athletes. And what and what's the what is the folk for, for the listeners, what's the focus of Olympic weightlifting? So the sport itself would be two events, the snatch and then the clean and jerk. Mm-hmm. So the whole fo- focus of the sport would be training for those two lifts. Yeah, and those are two very explosive movements. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure you have a great handle on the weight. You have to have amazing control of your own body and the weight at the same time. Uh, And at the same time, aggression, like aggression and explosive energy to bring that weight up as uh, as powerfully as you can, Um, especially when you get up, you were, you were uh, messing with 300 pounds, right? When your cleans and the, was actually, that was a, that was a power clean, right? That was, yeah. One of them, I think one of them that's on there is a hand power clean at 300. Yeah. Yeah. And then that was probably about a year ago. I'm trying to work my way back up to that. <laughs> no, that's cool. And, and the other thing I noticed too is that, you know, it's it's so funny when I'm uh, talking with different people about what kind of fuels their, fuels their workout. Um, a lot of people will use music, right? A lot of people use music. And some people will listen to, you know, rap. Uh, some people will listen to screamo music. Some people listen to... Um, some, some, some people listen to very soft music. Some people won't listen to music at all. You know, it's, mm-hmm. I, occasionally I'll listen to a podcast or try to just get, gain information as much as possible during that time. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that when I went over to your page, I was hearing Rage Against the Machine. I was hearing System of a Down. You know, I was hearing all of these, all of these very, very uh, aggressive kind of sounds. But I, but I think it's important to, to mention, like, the aggression is there maybe not anger anger aggression but that that onness you know you're turning your whole body on you have to be braced the whole time um and that music really does help to help to bring that you know bring that to light in your own in your own lifting but you also have to be focused all at the same time so it's that focused aggression yep <laughs> there's <laughs> actually so i got my master's from cal state fuller too okay yeah um i'm not sure if this was published but it was an abstract on the wall in our lab uh-huh um a couple of the grad students did 
some research on self-selected music uh-huh. and how that affected your workout. Um, and actually, I guess I didn't. Or I've read it, and I think the conclusion was that self-selected music um, improved the workout uh-huh. or improved. I'm not sure what the measures were that they um, tested, but. I think it just depends on whatever you like. So like you said, you chose one day you'll listen to rap, one day you'll listen to Mm -hmm. rock, one day you'll listen to podcasts. As long as you're selecting whatever the music is um, and that's what you want to listen to, then uh, it's it's pretty interesting to see that it could help like your workout. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense because, I mean, the... the the central nervous system, us us tightening up the body and, and being able to to engage and be on, um, it it's uh, it is affected by our mood, right? It is affected by us us being able to squeeze as hard as we can and brace our body is affected by um, how our day is going, you know, what's on our mind. If we're if we just don't feel it, um, all of that can just make us not squeeze as hard, end up failing the lift, and then end up getting more angry because oh, I should have been yeah. able to do this, you know, I should have been able to do that. And then it's just a downward spiral. Yeah. Once you start getting mad, and yeah. then you keep trying, trying, keep messing up. Yeah. And so it makes sense that when you when you know yourself and you know the kind of music that you want to listen to during those times, um, that that's that's what gives you that motivation. It's what gives you that boost, um, that boost of energy. And it's all and and there's there's the crescendos of the song there's the breakdowns of the song you know yeah. everybody's going to do their pr on the bridge yeah. right we're having that that you know funky beats coming on or the hardcore or, breakdowns or the drop on. of yeah that drop you know boom you know yeah that's uh that is really interesting and i and i think that's a good tool to use when you when you are trying to um hype yourself up for that one uh for that one lift that you've been working so hard to build up towards yeah um probably not a good idea idea to do every day though Right, maxing out. No, no, yeah, probably not a good idea to do every day. Like, um, uh, or you know, definitely not maxing out. But but yeah. even hyping yourself up, you know. Oh yeah. Um, that need to that need to continually um, hype yourself up with pre workout, and then you know you get yourself pre workout. You got your buddy who's slapping you on the back, and you you know Just super high arousal all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I in, in my in my opinion, that's. That's not you actually working on your body. Those are all stimulants. Those are yeah, all yeah. you know. You're you're adding more and more stimulants. Um, even even the the ammonia, you know, sniffing, yeah. sniffing ammonia. That that as well. It's this is all stimulants to make you push harder than your limit, which is great. But that's that's something that you want to be able to turn on yourself, mm-hmm. right? That, yeah, that's it has to part come of, from within. Yeah. Um, and it seems like your that style of training that you've been doing, you've, you're very calculated in making sure, like, hey, this is um, you were you were doing a test for the combine, right? You were the, just for fun, yeah, just, just for to fun, see right? what what I could do from or, uh, before and then after. Yeah, so I'm and, about halfway through that right now. And already you've you've built up 20 pounds on your squat, you know, and, and you've you've uh, increased in uh, you, you've increased in all of them, right? Yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah, and and, and uh, giving yourself. 12 weeks to be able to do that a good a good amount of time to, to prep for something like that um, and it, there's something to be said about I'm not going to force myself to get there tomorrow but I'm not going to kid myself and not think that there's that there's not work to be done yeah. you know there's 12 weeks of work that needs to happen in order for me to perform at a, at a better place than where I was mm. and that is um, and, and that's evident in, in the way that you've you've um, done your training what um what uh inspired you to become a, a trainer what's your what's your background so i think i've just always enjoyed working out and working hard uh, i would say it probably goes back to playing football in high school okay as a freshman i think i came in at like 100 pounds so i was always smaller mm. and then i just took it as I needed to work harder in the in the weight room and I needed to be stronger and I needed to do to improve myself in that avenue because I can't change that or I can't make myself get taller or right, right. We're I can even gain weight but there's no um, supplement there's no yeah. training program there's nothing that's going to make you taller there's nothing for that but, but they, you can't get faster you can't mm-hmm. get stronger you could get bigger as far as, as muscle mass yeah, yeah those are all things that yeah these so that's probably where my interest in lifting started okay and then I would scour the internet, try to find everything I can on how to train a little better. Um, obviously, we were doing the program that the coach wrote in high school. I was going to ask, what kind of what kind of stuff were they having you do then? Uh, we were doing pretty much all the, the core lifts, um, 
power cleans, power snatches, back squats, front squats, awesome. uh, bench press, clean pulls, and then there were all kinds of variations like weighted lunges, step ups, stuff like that. Now, was there a lot of guidance in that, or were you kind of just he gave you the exercises and and you because because I've because I used to work at a at a corporate gym and we'd get we'd get athletes all the time coming in and they'd come in with their program from their coach. Um, and uh, and their coach would give them a, a clean and clean and press, right, a, or a clean and jerk, and these kids would just be, oh man, oh it looked like somebody dying, <laughs> you know, just this horrible falling falling sometimes and just hor- horrible form, not 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 connected with their own body. Yeah. Um, was was the coach giving a good amount of guidance, or, or do you feel it like was it was the same same deal? Same uh, same deal. It was basically program written on the board. Okay, and then just supervision. Um, but I, it's hard to fault any of the, the high school football coaches or any sport really oh, yeah. that are running the strength training because they are teachers and they're not strength and conditioning coaches. Right, right. So they haven't necessarily, depending on what subject they teach, if they teach PE, then maybe they've had some kinesiology uh, background mm-hmm. as far as their education. But any, um, any degree that they have or any specialty they have outside of that, it's hard to fault them for not knowing yeah. because they can't teach their classes on a certain subject and then be expected to coach football or coach whatever exactly, sport and then exactly. late at night try and study proper technique strength and conditioning principles yeah. stuff like that so and that and that's that's hard for that's hard for parents and then as trainers to kind of look back and see okay well well the football the football coach may not have been the best trainer for for the for the athletes that's but that's what makes us important right that's what yeah. that's what makes those strength and conditioning coaches important is that the football coach is going to be hopefully a great football coach and, yeah. uh, and and be able to to help you with the techniques of the plays and help you with the mindset and help you with those those more uh, skill skill set kind of training, the, the specific skill set kind of training, mm-hmm. um, but they may not, and they won't be able to go to go with you to the gym. Yeah. And if there's a whole team, they're not going to be able to look yeah. at every single player one on one, and that, that becomes a very dangerous and scary situation for the child because um, because then how do you know if they're they're going to end up getting injured? You know yeah. how do you know if there's there's a breakdown in form, there's a breakdown. Um, yeah. So and the problem with that is the the injury usually won't manifest itself in the weight room so it's hard to see that 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 the breakdown in technique was what caused the injury on the field uh-huh. so making that connection um i i see coaches post things or post videos and talk about how in their time coaching they've never seen any injury in the weight room and they've always had their players look like this or or lift this certain way mm. but they're just not making that connection between okay so you're you're lifting a heavy load in a certain way and you're having this technique breakdown in the weight room. What do you think happens when you add the same load or more load or add speed? So at higher speeds Uh on the field, so say you're doing a power clean at close to your max and then it's complete form breakdown. It just doesn't look good at all. Right. right. When you go to make a tackle under higher loads or uh, faster velocities, then you're going to have that same breakdown. Yeah. And that's bring those imbalances with you. Yeah. Yeah. You, so you're just strengthening the dysfunction, and then on the field, it starts to manifest itself under higher loads, under um, faster conditions, stuff like that. Yeah, so. and, and and it also doesn't help that the coaches are saying, "Go, go, go!" You know, don't don't stop. Push till you can't push anymore. You know, leave it all on the field. And they treat they treat their uh, they treat their training sessions like like it's on the way. field. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, one of the things that I that I preach is that you have your your training in the gym where you're preparing your body um, you're, you're preparing this vessel in which that you'll be practicing with so you have your, your training and then you have your practice and in practice you don't want to kill your teammates so you're yeah. not you're not going 110 percent you're working on the techniques as a team you're working on those things that you need to to practice for the actual performance where you'll where you will be put leaving it all on the field where you will be going 110 mm-hmm. but you don't you don't go 110 percent in the gym um, at the risk of injuring yourself and not being able to practice at, at the, the capacity that you need to. Yeah. And then if you're not able to practice at the capacity you need to, how are you going to perform? And that's what matters. Yeah. Um, and, and this kind of go, go, go in, in the gym and go, go, go in practice and go, go, go mm-hmm. in the game, that just, that just leads to injury. I was, waiting for a, I was waiting for a good time to bring this up. You, uh, you, you made a recent post, um, and, and I, just, I just needed to, to quote you on this. 
I just absolutely needed to quote you on this. Um, it's in my phone right here. Um, you, you had said, a system unchallenged is a system unchanged. So I was actually quoting someone else. On okay. That. It wasn't, wasn't my quote. Okay. I believe it's Dr. Verkashansky that said that. Okay, awesome. Um, a Russian sports scientist. Okay, awesome. Well, well that's perfect. We'll, we'll quote it. That's good. Good information shared, right? Uh, a system unchanged is a system, or sorry, in, in, a system unchallenged is a system unchanged. In order to see improvement, you must continually challenge yourself, progress your training, but be careful not to push past your limit. Once technique breaks, uh, or once technique begins to break down, uh, you begin to strengthen or reinforce your dysfunction, which will likely lead to pain and injury in the long run. And in the long run is what we have to focus on, especially with with uh, with children, yeah, youth athletes. Yeah, because that that's the if you want them to be future athletes uh, in in college and in professional, um, you have to make sure you take care of them at that mm-hmm. at that early age. Absolutely. Um, I am so sorry for the sidetrack there, but no <laughs> problem. It, it ties into exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I was just gonna say. Um, as you were saying, the go, go, go attitude, uh-huh. um, bringing it from the field into the weight room. Like I said before, we still can't fault the coaches because it's not their responsibility to know. They kind of just found themselves, they're football coaches, they know that their athletes have to lift. The schools can't pay for a full time strength and conditioning coach, right, so they right. just found themselves in that role. And we can't possibly expect them to know as much as a strength and conditioning professional yeah. would know. As much as, as, much as someone who, who it's their job to do the research, mm-hmm. to take care of this one athlete, yeah. to to um, do everything they, that they can to make sure that their form is great. Like that, the coach has to worry about all these other things. Yeah. And, and um, there's yeah. just so much on their plate that it's it's hard to fault them. Um, we just need to keep doing stuff like this, keep putting information out there to try and get them to seek um, seek some guidance with their training. Yeah, and, and before and, and before Ryan continues, yeah, if you if you're a young athlete. Don't don't just think that you getting that weight from point A to point B is the important part. That's great. That's great that you can lift that weight. But at the same time, what's happening in between is far more important because that you are you're not training the weight to go up and down. You're training your body to bring the weight up and down. Yep. And to, you're training the body to to be engaged and have control through that whole range of motion. So just because just because you can you can you know hit that deadlift. Or, or bring that weight up for the clean or bring that weight up for the for the snatch um, if, if you don't feel comfortable and you don't feel like uh, and, and not comfortable in the sense of oh that was easy but yeah. you know if you don't feel like everything was the way it was supposed to be then you need to drop the weight and you need to work on that form you need to work on perfecting that that movement yeah. right and, and, that, mm-hmm. and that's that's uh, unfortunately not where a lot of children's focuses are yeah. Uh, but continue what happened after that what uh, after after football what did you what did you end up getting um, into? So, originally even then, so I liked lifting, um, liked being involved in athletics. Um, I, I wanted to be involved in athletics, and I knew that, mm-hmm. but I thought it was going to be from more of a clinical standpoint, so as a okay. pr- uh, physical therapist, um, something along, some kind of sports medicine uh, professional. Okay, they don't play a lot of rage against the machine. Yeah, those not really, <laughs> which, is, which was one of the problems. Um, but I just didn't think that I wanted to be stuck in an office or um, I just wanted to be in the more active, livelier environment. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I found out the strength and conditioning was actually a career that people got paid to just hang out in a gym all day, blast music and uh, help train people, write programs, I was on board from then on. um, And that's pretty much what led me into getting my formal education and then continuing to train people from then on. Now, were you were you enrolled in uh, in SCU uh, down the street or? No, I uh, so I went. I got my bachelor's at Cal State Long Beach. Okay. And then from there, I went to Cal State Fullerton for my master's. Awesome, awesome. And so, how did you how did you end up uh, getting connected with SCU um, training over the training over at SCU? I it timing just worked out that way when I was uh, graduating from Cal State Fullerton. Uh-huh. I just saw the opening for the, the position at SCU, so I applied for that. Awesome. And, then and it's cool, too. To it's cool, too, because um, did, did you bypass the whole corporate gym phase? 
No, I worked in LA Fitness a long time ago as a personal okay, trainer. Okay, okay, okay. So then, okay, that's that's not that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it wasn't at all. I thought it was a great experience. Yeah, it's a, it's always a great experience. I, I make fun of it sometimes because yeah. I was. And I, we all do. There, there's there's obvious negatives yeah. to <laughs> there's, there's obvious negatives to to working in a corporate gym. But at the same time, I, and I was just talking to another another trainer who had worked um, at a corporate gym. Um, but you just learn so much. You just yeah. learn so. It's just a, a an amazing learning experience where you know the the programming that you learn in your certification doesn't necessarily teach you about what's going to happen when you tell someone what to do and they don't do yeah, it. You yeah, know exactly. And and the certification doesn't necessarily teach you how to deal with someone who recently had a family member die mm-hmm. or you know recently. Um, dealt with the breakup and now they're depressed and now they, they their training needs to change and their moti- and the way you motivate them needs to change and, yeah. all, and all these different things and all these yeah, different the, situations. The relationship building aspect of things. Oh yeah. I think that was that was probably the, the biggest takeaway from working at LA Fitness because that was one of my first training jobs mm-hmm. or formal training jobs and I think I was probably probably the most awkward personal trainer and <laughs> I, looking back on the people I trained and how we would just sit in silence for like 30 minutes for the entire training uh-huh, session uh-huh. and just not talk about anything. And then the, the things I learned from that, just being awkward for like half six months to a year before I figured out, all right, we got to figure out how to make small talk, I guess, and talk with people as I'm training and kind of dig into their lives and how they're doing and oh, yeah. just build the relationships. Oh yeah. And, and, uh, it's it's important to recognize that that our job is working working with people. Mm-hmm. It's working with people, and and uh, no nobody. And if it wasn't if it wasn't that, it would just be us ordering them what to do all the time. We yeah. we would be more of a. I, I mean, even even football coaches are going to say, "How is your day going?" You know, yeah. or hey, what you know, there, there'll, there'll be a little bit of small talk there, I'm sure. But if we were just ordering them what to do, we, we'd be. You know, they'd be our slaves, and we'd yep. be the slave drivers. Just and they probably wouldn't pay anymore, and they wouldn't come back. <laughs> yeah, they probably unless that's pay what more. they wanted. Yeah, and and um, and and I think it 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 kind of helps. It helps to connect with the clients in that way and in, in the relational way. One because we're all people, and we should all want to connect with more people. We should all want to build and, and build um, our, our our network of relationship with other people. Um, but at the same time. You know, you know what it's like working out with a buddy, right? Yeah. Um, and one one thing in personal training that I've always I've always felt like um, I, I love myself and haven't been able to do um, and, and haven't been able to do as off, as often now. But one thing when you get someone who is is signing on to be with a trainer, they're basically signing off to to then work out with a buddy, and they're signing on unless they do partner yeah. partner style training. But um, they're basically saying I'm I'm not going to be putting on my headphones while I'm working with you, right? Yep. I'm not going to be uh, in my own little world. I'm going to be listening to you. I'm not going to be with a buddy, uh, with my best friend who has the same goals as me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to be invested in you. I'm paying you to tell me what to do. I'm, I'm listening to you. You are my influencer. Um, and that's a lot of trust. That's a lot of trust being being put on on someone. Um, and with that, with that trust comes great responsibility, mm-hmm. and <laughs> you know, uh, and it's um, it's it's honestly an awesome opportunity to then just share the same passion that we built in yep. this industry uh, and in our careers. This the passion that we have to just share that pas- passion with other people, yep. um, and to do our best to make sure that we're that we're just as much invested in them as they are invested in us. Yep. So so that's cool. You you ended up. Um, uh, connecting with SCU in that way, you know, I looked at the facility. Um, I wasn't able to, to, to go visit this week, but um, in looking at the facility, I love that it is very focused on on. Um, if, if I if I saw the right picture, it, uh, that it's very focused on those barbell movements. Mm-hmm. It's very focused on those those power movements and the and the overall strength movements. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that you're that you don't see. A lot in gyms today, yeah. we're seeing more of the isolation um, yeah, the movements, machines, the machines, or, right? Where unless you're in like a CrossFit gym or something like right, that, right? Right, CrossFit more, gyms have more, more that. emphasis. Um, yeah, but we're like the tr- the the trainer of today. When they get a new client, they're going to teach them how to one arm row yeah. when they barely are connected with their body, or a, or a curl to press while balancing on one leg. 
um, you know, <laughs> while, while raising the leg up, like the, and and they won't actually get them connected with their body. They'll they'll just show them how disconnected they are with their yeah. body. Um, and I love that the facility sets it up for for you to be able to teach someone how to um, control their body against that kind of barbell weight, where it's more you you engaging the, the embracing the body and, and getting connected with your central nervous system. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the differences that you've noticed in training at SCU as opposed to training at a, at a corporate gym? Like what, what is someone going to find training, training with you at SCU that they, that they wouldn't find over at, at a LA fitness or a, you know, corporate, another corporate gym. If they were, so if they're at the corporate corporate, uh, or at like at an LA fitness and working out on their own, yeah, yeah, like, okay. like uh, you know, uh, one, one thing that stands out to me is that it's at a, a very prestigious school yeah. that is focused on the wellness of individuals, mm-hmm. um, whereas um, it, it, it just kind of plays out this way that, that this big corporate facility um, really doesn't, isn't going to be calling you on the phone if you're not showing yeah, up, you yeah. know, to, to come into the gym. If you buy a membership and you don't show up, they're like, yeah. awesome, more room, awesome. You know? yeah, more space, <laughs> yeah, more space. So we can sign up a few so, more people. So that's like, well, that's one example. But yeah. as far as, as far as personal training, um, as far as personal training atmosphere and personal training services, like what are some of the things that SCU has helped you to provide that maybe LA Fitness wasn't able to? So first would be the, the facility and the, the aquatic kind of equipment there. Obviously, as you said, you don't see much of that. In a, or that kind of setup mm-hmm. in a LA Fitness or 24 Hour Fitness. Doesn't look like you have to be waiting for a squat rack. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then um, I would say the biggest thing would just be the attention to detail from myself and the student coaches or student trainers, um, and uh, the individual programmed or individually programmed uh, programs workouts. Mm-hmm. Um, right now. I basically tailor everything to the individual that comes in because it's hard to set up a cookie cutter program right, if right. you have people that are not coming in the exact same number of days, don't have the exact same goals, don't have the exact same issues. Yeah. So I'm basically writing individual programs for every single person that comes in. And that's awesome. So that's that's another big difference. Whereas um, with you know one thing, uh, are are you are you, uh, are you you're an employee of, of the SCU as a trainer there, right? Yeah. Um, cool. Do you get to spend extra time just focused on your on programming, or is that all kind of done um, w- in front of the client? No, I get. I have I have all my programs planned out. Awesome. So one of the things I hated about I hated about the corporate experience. You're always pressured to just clock out, right? You're yeah, always pressured yeah. to you don't you don't get the. The, the programming in and of itself yeah. isn't given the respect that it deserves. Yeah. The, the, the importance of you sitting down and really thinking about what are the best exercises for this individual, yeah. um, what are um, the most important um, tools that we're going to have to use for this specific individual. Am I even going to be able to use them because this is they want to come in at, at 6 o'clock yeah. when there's no, nothing available yeah. you know, in a, in a core facility? I know LA Fitness actually does have sectioned off an area, but, uh, but even then, you know, prime time. So it's really good that you actually get the time to yeah. think about that and actually sit down and, 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 uh, not, not have that pressure of like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. That's I think great. that was always an issue because the, the upper management don't really understand the importance of the programming, like you said. So yeah. they, they kind of just say, well, um, it, it's not that hard. Just go out there all these machines are here just pick a couple and then do your exercises there uh-huh. uh, you don't need this extra time and if you do then you can take it home because it doesn't take that long right and they just don't understand that it takes a lot of time and a lot of consideration to put together someone's program yeah and uh and 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 in, in a corporate facility where there is a lot of things taken out that that was another learning experience too um because when, when you're in that situation of training a client in a corporate facility and you had a plan, right, for what you wanted to lead them through, but, you know, that, that one guy who's texting on the phone and doing 10 yeah. sets today on that one exercise that you wanted to use, um, you won't be able to use it now mm-hmm. um, and on, on that specific machine or that specific uh, area or maybe there's no squat racks open and there's a line, whatever. Yeah. Um, so you have to really think about, okay, what's the next best yeah, what's thing? The next? What's the next best thing that I can do? So yeah. that... That, uh, in a in a way, was was a great learning experience because then you can kind of diversify someone's program that way, 
but you kind of don't want that problem, especially yeah. if you've already if you've already decided in your own mind this is the best exercise for them to do right now. Um, so it's good that it's good that you're able to do that there at that facility. That there's it's, always availability. Yeah, I mean, I would say that there's always going to be um, improvisation mm-hmm. with uh, programs because you never know if someone's going to come in and say, "Hey, I didn't. I slept one hour last night," or "Hey." Yes. I woke up and this started hurting today, and can we modify this? So you're always going to have to improvise with people's programs and exercises, but it's definitely nice when everything's going well that you can definitely do what you had planned to do. Yeah, yeah, and it's important too that you even mention that. Like if they if they they are if they only did get one hour of sleep and they come to you, uh, are you you they're not going to be able to perform at the same as yeah. if they got seven, eight hours of sleep. Yeah. And it's, I, I've even, I've even told someone to go home once yeah, because exactly. they just, they come in and they just look worthless yeah. today. And you know. nothing productive is getting done today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would much rather home. you go home and sleep this hour yeah. than, <laughs> than, than try to force your body to move yeah. uh, against its will uh, <laughs> when your yeah. body's saying go to bed. Um, and, and you have to be able to make those, those calls. Um, are you the are you the only trainer there? You're the I'm the the head trainer. Um, we do have student uh, chiropractic student uh, coaches there as well. Awesome, they're How, working as part of their or just to to make some money while they're going to school. Yeah, is there is that more of like a mentorship kind of yeah. process, or are mm-hmm. they just kind of walking around just watching you guys? Or no, so I have them come in, shadow me. We talk about programming. Um, I, I provide all the program because again, I get the time to write out the programs okay so when they're coming when they're done with class and coming in to train their classes i'll go over the go over the movements all the coaching points the cues the progressions regressions okay um basically everything about the program and then they'll they'll usually lead the class and then i'll be with them the entire time just paying attention to the details and this 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 needs to be the future of personal training this this mentorship this bringing mm-hmm. up someone into into doing this as opposed to I don't, I don't know if you experience this um, but uh, when, when uh, we, we would we would get new new trainers in a corporate facility um, we would be talked up as if we had been there a whole yeah. five years or something that mm-hmm. you know hey Adam just signed up as a, as a trainer um, it, it wouldn't be introduced this way. It wouldn't be introduced. Hey, Adam just got his certification. He's going to be shadowing me, yeah. um, and and he's going to be working with me as I as I train you. Um, and you and you guys might actually be working together. Um, but I'll be overseeing the program, and we're going to make sure that you're taken yeah. care of. And boom, boom, boom. You're learning. You're not lying to the client. You know, there, there's a there's a natural part of you being a part of this trainer's journey, and that's awesome that you're that you're invested in that. And that that is kind of how I would imagine it would it would be a, a better process. But unfortunately, it ends up being hey. Um, Adam is this is this awesome trainer. I go to him for all of my advice. I've literally heard this. I go to him for all of my advice. Um, he's the best that we've got. We're gonna hook you up with him and blah blah blah. And I just got my certification yeah. last week. You know, that's how it was at LA Fitness. And, and it's and it's really unfortunate because it's it's misleading. It's misleading. It forces the trainer to kind of assume that they're good mm-hmm. instead of knowing just just like this 12 week you know thing that you're doing right now the the you know that there's work that needs to be done you know um in in the same way as our knowledge as trainers we do need to constantly challenge our knowledge and keep learning and keep yeah, learning from absolutely. other people even if it's the same thing mm-hmm. you know even if it's it's the exact same wording just affirmation that these that these truths are are um are evident in our training um, it's it's nice to just make sure that we're constantly getting that information, constantly challenging us. But when you hear from from someone who's been in the industry longer than you, that you're that you're going to be able to, you're just you're going to be just fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, just have them go on this machine, that machine, that machine. Make them sweat a little bit, and they're good. Yeah. Um, that's that's why that's why um, you get such a high turnover rate with with certain with certain trainers in certain mm-hmm. gyms because they're not. There's no focus on the actual growth. Yeah. There's no focus on the actual programming, um, and the and the thing that's actually going to help them to be better. Yeah. Um, so no, that's no sending them to resources to continue to learn, or exactly. say like, "Hey, check this out. Check these podcasts out. Check this website out." Yeah. Which is which is 
absolutely un- unfortunate. I even in uh, realizing a year into training, uh, finding podcasts, finding YouTube channels, finding resources, um, getting extra education through through different resources, you you find that. Um, there is plenty of information out there to feed you in, and and not just not just training, but also in communication, mm-hmm. right? In, in communication, I sucked at sales. I I, I sucked at, at talking. It's a miracle that I'm doing a podcast right now because I, I absolutely suck at having a conversation in in like real life. But uh, <laughs> well, I was in the same boat, like I said, starting off personal training, having a silent hour with all my all my unless they like talking we were going to sit there in silence for an hour and i was just going to tell them what to do yeah and then watch them <laughs> yeah and i can i can i can relate to that it's hard it's hard to like come up with conversation yeah. topics you know like, thankfully i got much better at it over the years <laughs> but that first probably six months to a year was just silence most of the time hey it's 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 cold outside yeah it's <laughs> yeah uh no um and and the cool thing to it and and what i what i realized too is that um, you can't you can't not let your clients um, know about your own life too. Yeah, so yeah. and, and uh, things that you're you're working on. Yeah. So so I started doing Spartan races in the last okay. uh, last year. Um, yeah, 2017 was my first year of, of doing Spartan races, and I and I I found that the more uh, there, there's obviously a line you don't want to make your sessions all about you yeah uh, but I found that the more that I shared about my own experiences the more it was motivating my clients to want to not not do the same thing but mm-hmm. but do um, have a similar motivation for their own for their own training so it's important to have goals yourself as a trainer yeah. so that you not not just uh, knowledge goals but also the physical goals don't mm-hmm. just uh, don't just show that you're stagnant in, in yeah. your own training, but you should also be trying to grow physically in your own uh, in your own way. Uh, whether that's building strength or building better form or performing in this sport or, mm-hmm. or doing that, like you can always be improving in something. Yeah, practicing what you preach. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And practicing believing you in your product, basically, mm-hmm. or your service. Yeah. Um, so that's great. That's great that 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 mentorship process is there. Uh, at SCU, that's really that's really really important because yeah, you don't you don't want to be deceiving people into thinking that they're getting the best trainer on board. Yeah. Um, because ultimately, um, ultimately, there's always going to be some, and and I think that's a that's a lousy excuse too to say, well, we don't want someone to to not get what they're paying for. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be someone better. There's al- or not better, but there's always going to be someone who has more knowledge. We'll yeah. say that. Who, there's always going to be someone who has more knowledge. There's always going to be someone who can do a heavier clean than, than you yeah. and, a, and a heavier snatch than you. There's, yeah. you know, um, at the end of the day, we're not supposed to be the number one person in the in the gym in our city in our you know in our town. We're not supposed to be as trainers and and and, and strength and conditioning coaches. We're supposed to be the one who is who is linked to you, and we are the one invested in you. And and um, I think when you are placed in front of someone as a mentee or as as the mentor as a strength and conditioning coach the one thing that matters is that you are completely invested in this person yeah and if you are a, a trainee if you've paid for training and you're and you're uh you're paying for a coach that is the one thing that you should look for is that is your trainer invested in you um do they do they care about your success and that's that's really what you're what you're paying for yeah. and then along with that the the knowledge that they're gaining to help you and the guidance that they're giving you absolutely um so it's awesome that that you've got that system going on over at scu and I'm luckily a- um i'm able to be there with their for their classes so they're they're leading the class and kind of taking care of the organization and then i'm taking care of the details and they can kind of see me coach and we can talk about things so mm-hmm. i can go up to him and say he hey see this um, we should be doing it this way or they should be doing it this way or a better way to coach this movement would be to say this um, a better way to cue that would to be to do this yeah all and these kind of things and you've got a very important job in noticing what are the strengths and weaknesses of all of your of all of your trainers right yeah. what are what are the strength of all of your coaches what are the strengths and weaknesses that they have maybe you're going to get that person who absolutely sucks at talking to people and, yeah. and building that that connection um, and and you'll have to guide them in in um, better communication. Yeah. You know, it's it's not even sales. I, I remember when I was struggling with with um, talking in consultations and assessments. 
I would look up like how to sell personal training or how to, uh, and there would be channels, how to sell personal yeah. training, how to, you know, fitness marketing 101 or whatever. And, um, and they were great resources, but luckily these guys all had the same message in that it's not about selling, it's about communicating. How yeah. do you communicate what you want this person to know? How can you communicate your passion to them yeah. in a way where they understand it and they connect with it and they're just as passionate? Mm -hmm. uh, and books like Art of Woo, where it's, it's rhetoric that you're, that you're dealing with, how can, you, um, how can you use discussions and communication as an art to bring that communication there and bring that understanding between two people there. Yeah. Um, and that's just, that, that's a huge importance. Just as important as someone who is, has all the knowledge, right? Has all the knowledge and needs to gain more knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but if you can't communicate it, mm -hmm. that's, that's where that disconnect is. Yeah. So that's awesome that you're able to, to oversee all of that. How many trainers do you have there? Or co how many coaches uh, do you have there? Currently we have two other student trainers. Awesome, awesome. Um, Naturally, as they go through the program, they'll be eventually they'll be done at the school, and then they won't be training anymore. So we'll lose trainers, and then hopefully pick up more earlier in the program. Awesome! And you, and you that knowledge that they gain from from you is just sent off to wherever they yeah. end up going. Hopefully, it helps. So yeah. hopefully, they they continue to use it. Well, and that even that even brings a really important aspect of if they're going to school for for chiropractic. The SCU is, is mainly for. Uh, majority chiropractic care, right? Or physical therapy, physical therapy and chiropractic. Uh, chiropractic, I would say that's probably the majority, but they have uh, acupuncture, um, Ayurveda, okay. uh, massage therapy. Awesome, awesome. So so you've got all these other um, aspects of wellness, mm -hmm. um, but these trainers are also bringing the importance of that, that strength that needs to be built. Yeah. Um, and that's really important to know because even let let's say someone has a chronic pain, a chronic injury, and they go and they uh, and they they get the massage therapy or they go for chiropractic care. That doesn't fix the problem, right? That doesn't mm -hmm. fix the bad habits and the, yep. the dysfunction in their form, uh, whether they're lifting with dysfunction or whether they're walking with yeah. dysfunction, whether they're moving with dysfunction um, in their everyday lives. How they pick things up, how they step, how they lunge, how they you know how they drive, how they sit. Yep. You know, are they rounded and, and you know closed off and and uh, grounding their back and, and bringing that tightness to their body, or are they open? Are they yeah. do they have good mobility? Um, so so that's that's really good that, that they're able to go off and do that. Um, do you uh, do, do you think that the majority of the training that you guys do is based on that strength? Because I know you guys have group group classes yeah, that you that you um, train, and are they all different focuses? Um, so we have low intensity. Class, group fitness class, which is basically ends up being strength training for brand new people, people that are brand new to working out or haven't worked out in a while okay. or never really did it under supervision okay. or coaching. And then we have high intensity boot camp classes, and that's more of just circuit training. Um, I do throw in a strength aspect in the beginning of every class. Okay. That way, it's it's just a time to focus on technique um, to get comfortable with different. Uh, fundamental movements like squatting, hinging, okay, stuff awesome. like that. And then we have strength training classes, which is could be anything from, again, like the low intensity class. Anyone that has a uh, or that hasn't lifted ever, or not for a while, or never under supervision, mm -hmm. to people that regularly go to the gym. They just wanted uh, an, their own program or to do their own thing. Yeah. And then sports performance classes as well, which right now we have a few youth athletes who awesome. are looking to get more. Um, of those yeah better performance in their, yeah. in their sport that, and that's great and that's and that is that is what people need to be focusing on with their with their youth athletes is just making sure you know there's there is a place for you right there is a place for you if you if you haven't started anywhere mm -hmm. then start at the bottom don't try to force yourself to don't compare yourself to that one person who may be where you're not you know yeah. um, or don't don't compare yourself and train like elite athletes yeah you're, 13. When you might not be, yeah, you know, uh, one one of the things that I, one of the things that I that I say to my client, I've never I've never been like a a really really skinny person. Um, mm -hmm. My my genetically, I just I just have always had more uh, more body fat, and it wasn't until college that I actually leaned out more and and, and was able to build more of a of a balanced physique. Um, so I always envy those guys who are like starting off at 3% body fat. Yeah. They, have, they don't have any muscle mass, but they're starting yeah. off at like 3-6% body fat. 
and uh, and we all have the the chart that says you know this is when you're this is when you're at an unhealthy weight of body fat percentage. This is when you're at a uh, a uh, average. This is when you're fit, and then this is when you're athletic. You know that mm-hmm. that what would that be? That uh, six to thirteen percent body fat is the athletic zone of, of where your body fat should be. And I tell and and usually if if they're not athletes and they're still in that six to thirteen percent range, then their BMI is usually really really low. Um, at, a, at a lower than average level and I'll ask them do you feel like an athlete right now and they'll probably say no because they're just they're, they're just skinny they don't really have yeah. any muscle or connection to their body um, and I think you you just have to know that that's the truth it's not a bad thing it's just where you're at you know it's not a bad thing at all uh, if you if you are not able to do these certain lifts with perfect form or at least working on your form and and, and aware of your form then don't just jump into it yeah. you know to just be honest with where you're at and start where you can and take those steps forward and i love that you that you guys have that that build up of, of classes it's not all just one thing yeah you know and um, movement movement quality should always be a priority so just fi- using regressions of exercises if they're not there yet and then progressing them slowly once they have control of say a body weight squat to a to a chair or to uh-huh. a box or something then maybe we'll work on Range of motion, getting lower, add a, a kettlebell to it or a dumbbell for a goblet squat, uh-huh. and then just keep progressing from there when they're ready. Now, the programming for the group classes is it is it progressive or is it um, or is it basically you're getting um, you're getting pretty much the same thing with different variations every every uh, class. So the the hit boot camp classes, those are pretty much the same thing okay. because it's it's circuit training. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, I would say the strengths are progressive, okay. but um, all the other classes, I'm writing individualized programs for everyone, so they are progressive. Awesome, awesome, and then that's and that's great too. And, and uh, our in in line with what we've talked about already, um, I think it might even be a good idea for someone to do a, a low intensity class one day, and then maybe a high intensity interval training Absolutely. class the next day, and then do a weightlifting one this day, and then a low intensity the other day. Yep. Um, because yeah, we can't be pushing a hundred percent all the time, mm-hmm. and we can't be um, draining our body every single day. You know, we have to sleep. I, I posted that that Deadpool meme, right? Rest. You know what? What yeah. muscle is that? What muscle is my rest muscle, and how do I train it? But it's so important to know that that, that is just as important as a workout, if not more yeah. important. Yeah. Growth, growth of strength and growth of muscle does not happen when you're working out that's yeah. when we tear it down right yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the it actually goes this way when you're working out go straight yeah. down and you, then when you recover <laughs> then you super compensate and that's when you get stronger yeah and, and that's and, and so you have to be able you, you have to uh, it, it's so funny people are people are taking their pre-workouts for their workout and they're they're amping themselves up they're 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 uh, I was gonna say smoking that ammonia <laughs> they're uh, <laughs> they're sniffing that ammonia just as bad uh, <laughs> sniffing that ammonia um, to, to amp themselves up for that lift uh, when they sh- that when they probably should be taking that magnesium bath before before bed you know and taking that tea before bed and making sure that they're in a in a in a dark room making yep. sure they plan ahead mm-hmm. instead of doing two hours of a workout yep. uh, and and having six hours of sleep or yep. maybe two and a half hours of a workout and then uh, five and a half hours of sleep yep. maybe. Maybe take that take that workout just to an hour and sleep seven and a half hours. Yeah. You know, planning planning and making sure that you give priority to that recovery just as much as you're giving to um, the, the actual training that yeah. you're that you're doing. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's a return on investment, right? Yeah. You you want to you want to be a good steward of your time and a good steward of your body. And if you're doing all these things for it in the gym, but you don't end up recovering. You're not going to end up super compensating. Yep. You're not going to end up getting that that yep. return on investment of your time. Yep. Um, and and then the, the worst thing will be leading to overtraining, and now you're getting sick. Uh, your immune system's down. You're sick. You can't go to the gym for a week or however long until you're fully recovered. Now you've lost a week of time when you could have just exactly. recovered along the way. Exactly. And then that, just continue to make progress. You're not going to hit a plateau or go downwards. There's this guy, uh, Sal Stefano from the, the Mind Pump podcast, Mind Pump Radio. And one of the things he, he talks about is it's called like the breakdown recovery trap mm-hmm. that you're in. You're just breaking down yep. muscle and then you're just barely recovering. Breaking yep. down muscle and barely recovering. It's just a cycle and trap yep. that you can constantly find yourself in. And, and uh, especially with those with those who are doing like a body part split who do chest one day and they kill they absolutely kill their body 
there's no progressive plan, you know, that's really, that's really put into that. It's just how much can I waste my, my chest away? Yeah. How much can I waste my legs away? Um, and, uh, there's, there's no plan necessarily in progressing that, that load and allowing the body to recover. And then, and then meeting that recovery with more stimulation afterwards, yeah. you know, it ha- waiting a whole week, in my opinion, is far too long, yeah. especially when, what, what is it? Three, is it three days that, that the, that the muscle will start to atrophy at that point? Uh, is it, three? I think you have about a week until you, or maybe a week or two for strength. Before it starts Stren- okay, to so strength strength might be different, but yeah. the, the like uh, with muscle with muscle mass, even if you're still sore, even if you're still sore, you've got you've got these three days of, and correct me if I'm wrong, but but uh, I'll, I'll have to look back at this and fact check myself. But uh, I think three days to where if you were to work out again, as long as you didn't kill yourself that one day, if you were to work out again, you get far more benefit from doing that than if you were to wait a whole week. Um, later, that that higher frequency um, has shown to be either just as effective or even more effective than just waiting a whole week um, to to stimulate a muscle again. Um, Especially in the beginning, if you're if you're training regularly, of every now and then, I would say take your deload weeks, take your maybe not a whole week off, but definitely. Oh, right. I was going to mention that too. Uh, you you uh, you had posted that you had you had been a part of a you had just just done a deload week yeah. or. Well, my, my posts are a week behind from where I actually am. That way I have time to edit up, okay. uh, all the videos and stuff like that. Okay, awesome, but, awesome. So that was two weeks ago, but post-wise, it was last week. Now, when you when you deload, this isn't like a complete break, right? We're no. not taking a complete break. We're no. still we're still sending a, a, a strength and muscle building signal to the body during this time. Um, but what are, what is where's your mindset and focus when you're on a deload week? Just to cut the volume. So okay. cut drastically cut the volume. Um, You'll be able to keep the intensity high and still recover, but just don't, you're not maxing out. You're just touching heavy weights and then moving on to the next exercise. And then just making sure you're really cutting your volume. I like to cut my volume at least in half okay. um, from the previous weeks, and I sometimes think, even more than that. And that's really important because like I'm, I'm drinking a, a caffeinated beverage right now. Um, it's really important because same thing with caffeine. If you just take more and more and more and more and yeah. more caffeine, it's going to do less and less and less for you. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? Spend more and more and more time in the gym and more and more volume. Yeah. Like it's just going to end up doing doing less for you. You're not going to have time to recover. You yeah. know all these things. So having that deload and resetting the body so that just like caffeine, once you cut caffeine out for a week or you you bring it down significantly and then you reintroduce it, it's gonna it's gonna just have way more benefit for you. Yeah than if you were to just continue going on and on. Yeah. Um, and that's, and just with lifting, the same thing. If you if you cut that, that volume in half and then go back to bringing the volume in, just does so much more for you. Plus during that week of recovery, then you're getting the super compensation. So when you start the next week, now you can bump everything up yeah. and continue to challenge the system more than you would if you didn't get that recovery. Yeah, and, and, uh, and still making sure that you're, even though you're bringing the volume down in half, still making sure that you are working on the movement itself yep. right your body mm-hmm. is still going through the movement it's you're not just yep. you're not you're not spending that week in dysfunction yeah right it's not a cheat week yeah. right it's not you're still you're still um making that happen mm-hmm. um so what's uh you're you're on the you're on the back end of um your uh test for the for the combine so right i'm now, on right? i think i'm doing week six this okay. week i'm at week six I'm posting week five. Okay. So I'm about halfway. Just about halfway. Yeah, right. Okay, halfway. awesome. So when when uh, training for a specific event, would you do a deload the week before the actual event? Or would you build it up so that that deload may, may be happening a little bit later? So I would, I would deload before the test week. Okay. So back off, let recovery and super compensation occur. And then do my test week after that. Okay, so and you're that, not that's, you're that's not maxing thing. out the night before, right? Yeah, you're not, <laughs> before. That's the same thing that I would do for weightlifting meets. So, deload or taper the week before, um, and then hopefully by the time the meet came, be fresh and hitting yeah. PRs or close to PRs. I would I would do the same thing for the Spartan races, running, okay. bringing a lot of volume in, in for running, and bringing mm-hmm. a lot of volume in for high intensity interval 
crap because yeah. we're <laughs> doing so many different things in a Spartan race. Um, but uh, uh, that that week before, even like a good three or four days before, yeah. I'll bring running down to just maybe a mile a day yeah. or just a mile every other day, just just so that I'm not killing the body. It's yeah. fresh. It's it's ready to perform. And again, that same kind of you know, you're training, you're practicing, and then you're performing. And so in that last week before your game, in that last week before that test, in the last week before that meet, whatever you're trying to perform for, um, don't let that training, right? Don't let the training keep you from practicing and don't let the practice keep you from performing. Yeah. Um, always give respect to that, to that um, order of things. Otherwise, the performance is gonna suffer. Yep, absolutely. It's been a pleasure having you on the on the the show. Uh, where can we find you? Where can we so, find you? So, if you want to email me, my email's Ryan Burns. So R Y A N B Y R N E S at S C U H S dot E D U. Awesome. Our uh, our Human Performance Center Instagram is S C U H S underscore H P. And then, if you wanted to follow my own Instagram, then it's Coach uh, underscore Ryan Burns. Okay, awesome. And and uh, and this is for this is for SCU. It's is it SCU Human Performance Center or is it SCU um, Health System? Because I looked on the website and I saw both of those there. Yeah. So the the actual gym that I work at, or the gym on campus, is the Human Performance Center. Okay. Awesome. So if they're going if they're going to the SCU campus, because we're because we're located in, in Whittier, California. Mm-hmm. So um, so anybody who's local to to listening to this show um, knows probably where SCU is. Yeah. Um, so if they're looking for for that actual facility, would there be a human performance center sign on the in the front or is it located yes. at a specific So part? it's it's right across the the walkway from the urgent care or the okay. center and it I there's there are signs that say human performance center, but um, probably the the bigger signs say ouch urgent care so it's right across the walkway from there. <laughs> awesome so if you end up hurting yourself and <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen too often um but uh but yeah so that so the scu human performance center um and then the instagram is for is for the, hu- the, for the health human system center it's it's uh for the gym for the human performance okay and center. that and that one is scu scu hs is uh underscore hs or or it's S C U H S underscore H P. Okay. So the, oh, that's right. the college right. is uh, Southern California University of Health Sciences, so that's the H S at the okay, end. Yeah, yeah. And then human performance. Uh, that's right, that's right. So I'm follow- I, I I just followed all of them yeah. uh, a week ago. So they're all blending um, right now. They're all blending right now in my mind. But uh, that that it's it is good that the school is and the gym facilities there are are getting into that social media Mm -hmm. because that that is where the community is right now and i think the more that they do to just reach out to the community um and not even just to like pull people in for group classes but just but to provide even just educate the community just to educate to put people like you and um and and to to allow this to happen where you're Mm -hmm. sharing this information and 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 discussing this uh on, on the on the podcast all these really really important points um, the more the school does that, the more people are just going to be be gravitated towards health. You yeah. know, be gravitated towards wellness. Yeah. Um, and we absolutely need need yeah. more of that in the community. That's definitely what we need. What and, we want to happen. Yeah. And, and it's and I got to say too, it's awesome to see someone like you who's who's uh, in the community teaching these things, and not only not only teaching these things, but teaching other trainers and coaches to do those things as well. We absolutely need more of that. Um, in, in our industry and in our community as well, mm-hmm. so it's awesome that that you are a part of that. Thanks. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah I, I just try to. I'm only one person, so I try my best to broaden my reach. That way, hopefully, I can help or affect way more people than I ever could by myself. So yeah. Well, if you're listening to this and you liked what you what you've heard, go ahead and and uh, reach out to to Ryan. Reach out to SCU and their facility and. Uh, and if you've been connected with the, the facility and uh, go over there and hang out and find find the facility. If you get hurt, go to their urgent care. Uh, ouch, as it's called. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure having you. Thanks for having me. Take care, boss.
We hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you did enjoy this content, go ahead and leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and subscribe to our podcast to be tuned in when more new episodes arrive. And don't forget to visit www.actfitnessacademy.com for more free resources. Oh, 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 oh,